Hey guys, one of the great things about Daily V is that DRock's around a whole lot and some things are obviously gonna be for the show but sometimes things come along that can stand alone and what you're about to watch is something that I know will bring value to so, so many of you. It's a long clip um, but it's advice that 65% of my audience really needs and, um, and I hope you enjoy it. How old are you? 32. Perfect. You're at the point now where why don't you just take three years and just do and see what that tastes like because you know what fucking filling journals taste like. Because I think one of the things that really works for me is I'm not worried about the micro, but I think about the macro. Oh, I don't know where the fuck this just came from, but I just walked in and saw it. This helps me a lot. Like, like I just, like, what the fuck am I doing with you right now? There's a lot more to do with the fucking showing up to the funeral than it has to do with yeah. fucking the bank account. And you know what's funny is you, if you actually live your life like the funeral, you end up making stuff for the bank account by accident. You end up meeting somebody who, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like it's so crazy when I think about like how I invested in Twitter and made all that money. It was more about giving shit about my funeral, like doing the right thing by a bunch of people which you know, led to going to South by Southwest which led to me meeting the Twitter guys which met, you know, like it's just. Yeah, like following your passion, following your list. Yeah, I mean you just gotta really think about like how, like I'll tell you like, even in four seconds, maybe some of the context Robert gave me, maybe I'm making some assumptions, but when you're thoughtful, like, I think one of the things that people feel, like struggle with is actually being very real with themselves. The difference between being, you know, the difference between understanding who you are versus who you wish you were. And, yeah. and I think that's something that I'm always very fascinated by when I have a meeting like this. Mm-hmm. Like, what kind of read do you have on yourself and how, like, you know, I think I would struggle a lot if I didn't really genuinely know who I was. Mm. And, it, and then once you know who you are, you get more comfortable with what you're up to. So like if I asked you right now, and I think it ebbs and flows mm-hmm. when you're 28, when you're 32, when you're 57, like if I asked you right this second, like, what do you want to happen and like, what would you say? What would I want to happen with like my creative projects or just with life or what way? Sure. All of it, all of it. Uh, what do I want to happen? I, yeah, I want to have a life where I'm able to create with fun, create with the team. I want to put out content that affects people's lives for the better in terms of helping them feel good or better about themselves and their relationships and cultivating relationships that are meaningful. I want to like travel with my man and like have property, international property, and like travel for fun and also for play and also a little bit of time for work, but controlling and maneuvering life with ease and also impacting people for the better in the process. That's cool. What are you hoping, as you're like rolling up to this office, what are you like, what are you hoping for? You know what? For real, by the way. Yeah, for real, for real. I mean, there are like, you know shit that I do not know. So I honestly just want to pick your brain about a couple of key things. Um, and I, I really like ideally like what I was hoping and what I expect is like to get in a place where like I know you and I could. Hit me up. Have a meeting. Yeah, start build, start questions. the process of building a relationship. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's start with this. If you want to, like listening to what you said, the first thing I will tell you, the best thing I, I think, I hope, I think the first best thing I can tell you is don't front. The number one mistake that people that aspire to the sentences that you just spit out of your mouth, the number one mistake they make is they try to over sell themselves because they think they need it to have people's attention. Try to oversell themselves. Correct, so let me give you an example. Whether it's life coach, inspirational figure, business coach, whatever form it takes, I think it's much smarter for you to talk to the world about your process of going through this than the advice that you think you should be giving them. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And that's where people are struggling. I I got real lucky. I've never said this, D-Rock, so pay real close fucking attention. I'm not sure that if the internet was around in its current form that I would be as successful because at 22 and 23, I knew I was special and I might have not been patient enough to first build a business, first get experience. I didn't start talking to the world until I was 35. Hmm. And 
I love to say to you, be patient, to you to be patient, I'm not sure if I would have been. I'd like to think I would have been, but the freedom of putting, like I love to hear myself talk. <laughs> like, like okay. you know, and I think anybody that is, spot, like think about, so do you, and so do so many of you, like that's what it is. And it's nice, there's nothing wrong with that, it sounds bad. It's funny, a lot of what I deal with now is being okay with not being politically correct. Work-life balance, yeah. cursing, whatever. Like meritocracy, you know, I don't know if you've seen this. Did you see that I was on The Breakfast Club? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know if you watched that interview or some of the content that I've been building on. I'm on a hot no excuses kick. I have a lot of female yeah. entrepreneurs. I have a lot of fans that are African Americans. I spent a lot of time in that community in my college years. I just think I'm giving the best advice to women and minorities in business today, which is tough. And it's crazy, like, you have to understand, in my body right now, it doesn't feel great. It feels a lot better going somewhere else. The problem is, it's the truth. Like, the market just doesn't care. And what's cool is, when you actually say, fuck it, then you start betting on your strengths. Do you know I was a businessman in a world where going to smart colleges was the only thing that mattered for businessmen? You were only a good businessman if you went to Harvard Business School. Mm-hmm. And then I reversed it. Like, I'm like, I'm a DNF student. Like, like, I curse, I don't dress the part. I do me, and then you know what happened? The world came to me. And so, I would tell you that the best thing that you're gonna walk out of here with is something that took me a long time to really realize is if you wanna pull this off and you want people listening to you, there's only one thing, the truth. Just the fucking, and no, everybody says that fucking cliche term. Just beat yourself and all that shit. I, it's unbelievable how much that's the reason I'm winning. Hmm. I, and I think it's easier when you have a level of success mm-hmm. and it's harder when you're climbing up the ladder but I think that there's a lot of people who if they talked about the journey of the climb, could win. I think it's the best piece of advice I can give right now to a bunch of 20 to 30 year olds that feel that they should be talking to the world and bringing value. Talk about your journey of trying to find that voice and synthesize it properly versus, let me tell, go find, you know, because the problem is a 30, 40, 50 year old listening to your one minute rant video on Instagram even if it's powerful, there's a level of cynicism of like, well, what do you know? Yeah. And I think that that's fair. And look, you could just be a whiz kid about the world, and that exists, but I do think there's a smarter way to context it. You know, it's like starting the sentence of you should versus, you know, it's funny, right now I can say you should because I built so much. Yeah. But if I was at 20, it needed to be like, my intuition says, and that changes everything. Or when I look at, or when I met with Gary today, the takeaway I got was, that's, got it? Yeah, uh, what's your perspective is on cultivating relationships with people who not only believe in your ideas, but can actually help fund or will point you to funds. Because right now, all my friends are broken trying to create some shit. You know, it's like, (laughs) I can't can't borrow from your negative bank account. So like, how do you get into a position where you are around people who are influencers or who also will donate or whatever the case may be? The market will give you money. The happen. market will give you money whether it's Kickstarter. I'll give you money. You just have to give somebody what you want it against. So the biggest problem right now is finding money is not the problem. Really, it's not. I'll explain. That's definitely my problem right now. Well, let me explain. It's not. It's how you're looking at the world. Okay. There's things like AngelList and Kickstarter. Do you know how much harder it was for your mother to get money? Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that shit. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, do you know how hard somebody would slap you? That do you know that the 1973 version of you, if he was sitting here, would punch you in your fucking mouth? Because money is the last thing you have to worry about. Angel list, Kickstarter, the the world can give it to you. You start a Kickstarter, mm-hmm. can. You know why most of them fail? Because most shit is whack. Because most stuff isn't good because most people don't give a fuck. Mm. You can go to AngelList and hit up all the angel investors. The real question is, before you go there, is I think most people say, everybody says to me, Gary, I can't find money. 
And then I go, cool, I'll give you money. What do you got? And then they don't know. Hmm. So tell me, what am, I, what am I buying? Your brand? What, in perpetuity? Yeah. Got it? Mm-hmm. There's a, we're, we're living through a really interesting time in the world right now where people don't like, where art and science and business are colliding and they're all very different. I understand the art that's in your heart, but how are you gonna, yeah, see, I got lucky. I had the art and the business. Mm-hmm. But like, okay, what am I buying? There's no buying, look, buying into Gary Vaynerchuk would have been a really good idea for a lot of people, but it wasn't for sale, and I didn't even know how to sell that. Like, what do you sell? Like, what are you gonna make 20% of my speaking fees, or my book deal, or my TV deal? I just Like, right? I guess you can do that. I actually do think that plays out over time, but if I said to you, cool, I got money for you, what are you selling me? Like, what's the business? So what I hear in that is, when you show up with more content, that allows people to see more of what they're investing in. More no, of what I would say is, what's the container I'm putting my money in? You could have unlimited content. You could have 4,000 episodes of a podcast and the greatest Instagram account I've ever seen and the funniest Snapchat and Instagram stories I've ever seen. Great. So that's not inherently letting people know what they're investing in. Like that lets them know a little bit about you, okay. but what's the vessel? Got it? So, you're saying so when I meet fuck Jerry, or when I meet the fat Jewish, mm-hmm. I know they've got attention on Instagram three years ago that really matters. What am I investing in? Oh, oh, fat Jewish, you're making a rose? Oh, I can put $25,000 into that and own 8%? Now you've given me something to put the container in. Oh, fuck Jerry, you wanna become Buzzfeed? You're gonna build a website and have traffic and sell ads? You gotta come to me and say, what, what am I investing in? You have to put your thing into a container that's investable. Nobody's writing a check to a person. Yeah, okay, package it. Package it. And then, and then it gets hard because once you package it, you have to be able to explain it in business terms. And that's not necessarily what everybody does. Yeah. This is where it gets into partnerships. One thing I would tell you based on the vibe I'm picking up, if you and I both grew up in Milwaukee, you know, I would have been a great partner for you because I could have been the businessman to the art, if that's how you're thinking about it. Maybe you're the business part, but it's not what you've been bringing up yet. I don't know, I've been in a position where I've had to do like both right now, you know? Well look, I mean, you should, you should be putting out content on a very regular basis. You should start a pillar show, whether it's, I mean, vlogging I think is very fascinating. Mm-hmm. You know, you should be doing Instagram stories and Snapchat stories at scale. You should be putting out seven to 25 pieces of content on both those platforms a day. A day. And let me explain how. Don't go fancy. Mm-hmm. Document versus create. When you, when you oh, make, you, you like that, right? It's a, big, it's a big shift. When I say seven to 25, you say, my God, how do I produce seven to 25 meaningful things that will have me respected versus document? See, that's the thing. That's, that's always the thing is like meaningful that will get me respected. I feel like mm-hmm. anybody can put out shit. You know, like I don't want to put out shit. But shit is subjective, my man. And I got good news for you. You're fully in control. Yeah, yeah. People always like, Gary, you put it, like, I'm in control. You know how many things I say no? They send me quotes to put out on Instagram? Nope. I'm in control. Who makes the final call on like productions? The producer, the director, I don't know, whoever. Who's the final person? Producer. Great, you're the producer, my man. Yeah. Right? I don't know, you, t- you, you take a selfie with a nice skyline and you're like, yeah. But you gotta put out stuff. And you, and you gotta fabricate it. Like, when you're, like, I still can't believe how many people that live in New York don't use New York people. If I were you and I had an hour right now, go in the fucking park right now, right now like, I don't know, like go back to your basketball roots, stand outside the garden right there and be like, what do you think about the Knicks upcoming season? Mm-hmm. Yeah, interview four people, one person gets into a thoughtful conversation, he was the former ball boy in 1957, it's a nice story and boom. You see where I'm going? Yeah, yeah. People aren't starting. People aren't starting. They're just not making. They're thinking, they're pondering, they're strategizing, they're debating. The difference between people like me and, and the far majority is I'm just doing it all times. I'm doing so much that I've decided to have a fucking man walk around with a camera and, and follow me because who knows when it's gonna happen. And you know what's so funny? In parallel my brain right now, when you're gonna leave here, I'm gonna say to him, D-Rock, I want this whole thing cut. The whole thing. Like what I'm giving you, 
so many need right now. So I'm like, fuck it, let's just put it out. Right? right. So I, like you mentioned before, you know, you have to be putting out content all the time. I personally go through these periods of like extreme creativity and extreme just chill. You know, like I'm not feeling it. How do you motivate yourself or how do you continue this process of like go, 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 go and balance that with like self care and checking in with yourself, you know? I do what feels right to me. You do what feels right to you? Yeah. So if I got to check out for the week, uh, I check out for the weekends all the time, no creations. People are like, where's your Snapchats? So like, um, I don't know, I've got to be with my family. Like, I don't punish myself. Hmm. But. That's really hard for me in, in right now. Good, of course. I feel that same thing of like, dude, you're not putting shit out. You're not doing enough. You had a following and you're not doing shit. I agree. All right, here. <laughs> you see where I'm yeah. going? Yeah. I don't know. Life. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think you, you should, I don't, I don't think you should squander it, but like, I mean like, you just gotta, you, you know, listen. This is back to, do you know yourself? Mm-hmm. Or do you aspire to be something you might actually not be? This is the toughest question of it all, my man. I mean, if you wanna be respected mm-hmm. and really known, show, up. show the fuck up. Are you fucking kidding me with a week, going a week without doing something? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how much into my content you are, but I always say yeah. nobody you've ever met got there without the hard work. Nobody you know, it's just real. You know, do you know how insane the Daily V and the Snapchat stories has been to everybody? They didn't realize how hard I was going at it. You can't believe how many, you can't believe how many people, you know how many fucking people used to say the word luck? That, that word luck has gone right back, like nobody has the audacity to say that to my face now, and I love it. Mm. And that's why I did it, I did it, I made it for you because you can watch it and be like, okay. But I think yours is different, I think a lot of theirs is different. It's because I'm not fancy about it. Document over create. I mean, there's so much magic going on. Dude, you're in fucking New York City. You know how many people, again, I'm gonna cut this whole thing because this is the advice everybody needs. You know how many of them sitting in a place that's not New York City? You got a billion fucking stories out there. You don't feel motivated that you need to tell a story today or create? Just Go let somebody else to do it. You have so much charisma. You walked in here in two seconds. You walked in here in two seconds and I'm like, okay, this kid's got a little mad. Like, you can roll up on anybody and get them to feel comfortable. Yeah. Except racists. <laughs> but, <laughs> I do that shit every day. It's fine. But, I can do, do you, that too. but do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's so fucking awesome. So you can't create? Distribute. Ooh. Got it? You can't create today? That's what I have. Facilitate. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. There's no excuse for not talking to the world. It just doesn't have to be your thoughts and words every time. Mm. Yeah, thanks for that. I'm on fire right now. I'm on fire, D Rock. Do you have like three <laughs> more minutes? Yeah, let's. I mean, look, I'm going until they pull me out. Um, you're already eight minutes over. Building so a you're team. winning. Yeah. A team. Don't how, even worry. Don't even think about it. You're not even close to that. Why not? Because you, you don't have the money to like really build the team, right? You can have homies help you out along the way. Truth is, I feel like I've exhausted those resources, though. You know? Good. Let me let me give you a real good answer. I got a feel for you right now. Yeah. You need to work on you before you worry about a team. What do you mean? I mean, you got to get your shit together. Like you're you're responding to the right thing. Like I don't know much. What what I do well is I talk, and then through reaction I listen. Mm-hmm. So that's how I get a lot done in a meeting like this, right? I could tell that you've, you've got certain things that you need to do before you worry about a team, get your thing in place. Consistency first. Yeah, get great at what we just talked about. If I go look now, and I'm gonna check, now I'm curious. If I go look in a couple weeks, and I'm like, oh my God, six, six you know, Instagram stories per day, like fucking you know, four Instagram posts, like he's been on Twitter on point, his Facebook, oh he's got a YouTube channel now, he's I've, like create, distribute, you know, do all that stuff, interview, like, there's so much creative shit, man. Like, like, I'm way more creative than I realized because stuff comes so natural to me. Like, for example, like, do a meme, and that's just a slang term for it, like, go take a picture on every odd street in New York, in Manhattan. Like, I don't know, like, go start at 113 and then 111 and 109, like, anything could be, like, right? Like call it odd corner and just literally do an interview every day on Instagram for a minute, starting at 113th all the way down. That's cool, right? And like that's I'm just making shit up. Like I don't know. Like 
Odd Corner, hashtag Odd Corner, it's your show. Every fucking Monday you go to fucking 113th, the next week 111th, and literally you stand there until somebody walks by and you interview that person and that's the fucking show. I think what I'm good at is building a pillar up top that creates content below. Daily V, Ask Gary V show, right? And then all flows from there. Where did this quote come from? I don't know. You know, like somewhere along the way, yeah. that, that's what's powerful. And I think you need to, cre- I think one thing that people struggle with is they, need, they think they need to, it needs to come from them and it needs to come from the structure down instead of, got it? And that's why you wake up and you're like, damn, I'm not feeling, like, you know how hard it is to manifest that kind of original creative thing from the bottom? Yes. <laughs> but if you, if, you may, if you literally lived your life under show, think of yourself as like CNN or MSNBC. Monday is odd corner, that's it. Like if you whiteboarded now on like mini shows that you could do, Monday's odd corner, Tuesday's like subway shots, Wednesday's like suburbs, you're just literally going out. Like, you know, and all of a sudden suburbs clicks and all of a sudden Toyota's hitting you up and saying, hey, we'll pay you and you'll drive a Toyota to, the, to Jersey, to Long Island. You see where I'm going? But you gotta put yourself in that position. But what you then are able to do is you don't have to think. You know why podcasts have worked for a lot of people? Because they interview people. Yeah. So they don't have Other to do the work. The there, That's right. That's why when everybody's like, oh, I love this podcast, oh, Gary Vee, and I'm like, you don't get it. They're just interviewing people. I'm creating original from the get. My version of that was, what's a better version of that? Oh, answer people's questions. Yeah. Also scalable but brings value to those individuals and the entire community. Mm-hmm. So, got it? Got it. Good man, give me an update in 30 days, send me an email, I'm dead serious. Okay. This is, you know, you came in here and said, I'd like to start the process of a relationship. Ideas are shit, execution's the game, execution. right? Yeah. Email me in 30 days, either you're gonna email me in 30 days and say look what I did, or what you're gonna do is not email me. Thanks. You got it brother. Appreciate you. Take care. For those that have gone through this video, I would really love a detailed comment on the number one takeaway from this video. This is, there's something here that I really wanna continue to expand on that I think is gonna really bring value and help people that are in a rut really win. So please, in-depth comment on the one thing that you really took away from this video.